One, two, three, four. Hey, it's back, Mr. Woos. No need to get tense. Just remember what I said. How math makes sense. If understanding is your goal, there's no need to fear. So let's review what we've learned in some rap this year. So we start off with expressions, you know, like a phrase of words, but instead we use numbers, operations, and variables. We can evaluate or find the value of expressions, but we've got to use PEMDAS, the order of operations. That's parentheses, exponents, multiply and divide, then add and subtract. So substitute or plug in that variable and chug away. Sometimes we use integers or positive and negative values. Remember, negative actions like adding a negative or subtracting a positive go left on the number line. It's like receiving a bill or spending cash. You end up with less. Positive actions like adding a positive or subtracting a negative go right in the number line. It's like receiving cash or canceling a bill. You end up with more. And then there are rational numbers. Fractions, decimals, and percents that compare a part to whole, numerator to denominator, or top to bottom. With percents, the whole is always 100. With decimals, it's tenths, hundredths, or so on. So how about converting any fraction to a decimal? Just divide the top by the bottom. Top goes inside your division box, the bottom outside. Remember, in and out, here's a wrap. Rational numbers. A rational number is just a fraction that turns to a decimal with a simple action. Divide the top by the bottom at a point, it's no problem. Keep dividing till it ends or repeats and extends. Or what about comparing or combining fractions? Just make sure they have the same whole denominator, or bottom. You can do this by multiplying the top and bottom by a common value to get an equivalent fraction. Just remember the golden rule. The golden rule of equivalent fractions. What you do to the top, you've got to do to the bottom. Equivalent fractions, that's why we've got them. Use them to compare or add or subtract. Common denominators make an impact. Then we study equations, mathematical sentences that tell a story. The powerhouse tool of algebra. Equations are just two expressions connected by an equal sign. If it's got an equal sign, it's an equation. To solve an equation with an unknown or variable, we work backwards and undo whatever operations are being done to the variable until it's by itself and we know what its value is. Just remember another golden rule. The golden rule of equations. What you do to one side, you got to do to the other. Keep it all balanced or it's gonna be a bummer. Use inverse operations to undo what's been done. Get the variable by itself, that's how the game is won. If adding I subtract, if subtracting I add, use the opposite sign as a matter of fact. Multiplying I divide, if dividing multiply, keep your eye on the prize and it'll be alright. Then we looked at more complex multi-step equations. The key here is to get the variable in one place so you can solve it like you did before. First, get rid of any parentheses of multiplication by using the distributive property. Then you can simplify or combine like terms. Those are any terms with the same variable and power. If you have a variable term on both sides of the equation, subtract or add one of them away. Just remember to do the same operation to the other side. Here's another rhyme. Combining like terms. Combine like terms and your expression simplifies. Add the x's with the x's and the y's with the y's. Get the a's with the a's and the b's with the b's or whatever same variables and powers you may see. Let's remember exponents, those small raised numbers next to a base number, also known as a power. Positive exponents mean repeated multiplication and create big numbers. Negative exponents mean repeated division and create small numbers or the reciprocals of big numbers. Here you go. Exponents. A positive exponent has power, and this is why. Take a base number and repeatedly multiply. Negative exponent means small. Here's how it's done. Just take the positive power and put it under O1. Then there are proportions, logical comparisons of two ratios that are equivalent. Another powerhouse tool of algebra. There are lots of ways ratios can be equivalent, like rates, similar figures, scales, and percents. Because the ratios form an equation, you can find an unknown value by comparing cross products. The cross product numbers closest to each other are called the means, and the cross products numbers farthest from each other are called the extremes. 
So the cross product of the means equals that of the extremes. Proportions. A proportion is just another name for comparing two ratios that are the same. You could take the cross product of the means and set it equal to that of the extremes. How about graphing? We practice plotting points on the coordinate plane using ordered pairs. That's x, comma, y. Remember, the x coordinate gives you a horizontal location from zero. How far right or left? The y coordinate gives you a vertical. How far up or down? Anyone ready for a game of Battleship? Here you go. Coordinate plane graphing. A coordinate plane is where graphs begin to axis form quadrants around an origin. In an ordered pair, x comes before y, positives to the right or up towards the sky. Functions tell a story on a coordinate plane and process information like a machine or computer following a rule or program. For every input or x coordinate comes along, there's one output or y coordinate. Remember, just like you have only one height at a point in time, a function can only have one y for each x. Functions. A function has an output for each input that comes in, like each person has an height, if you know what I mean. But to input the same out, that's okay. Like two people the same height, you see it every day. Every function has a graph, whether it be linear, a line, quadratic, a U-shaped parabola, or cubic, an S-shaped curve. These graphs have steepness, or rates of change, called slope. If the function's linear, it has a constant slope. That's a constant ratio of vertical rise over horizontal run, or change in y over x. You can find this value by measuring the graph or subtracting coordinates. Reading a graph from left to right, uphill is a positive slope, downhill is negative, flat or horizontal is zero, and a vertical line is undefined. Here it is. Slope. Slope is the ratio of rise over run. Change y over x is how it's done. Positive slopes up and negative slopes down. Horizontal is zero, but vertical is a frown. That's undefined. We also learned about two-dimensional geometry. That's points, lines, angles, planes, and polygons, and circles that have perimeter and area. Three-dimensional geometry that gives us solids with volume and surface area and statistics that help us represent and compare sets of data. But I'm out of wraps for now. Thanks for listening, and happy studying.